Hi guys, I'm George Johnson and today I've been tasked by Wex to go out with the Lumix S5 Mark II. Now we'd actually initially planned to shoot sort of a mini documentary about uh, a fi local fisherman, but it's actually too cold for the local fisherman to be going out today because there's a risk of ice and stuff. So we've had to adapt ourselves. Uh, so instead we're gonna be shooting a travel video. Basically we're in this little town, it's called Hella, or it's probably not called that, but like that's the best I'm gonna do. We're gonna be going around, we've got a few locations in mind and I'm just gonna sort of be creating a little travel video and talking you guys through it as I do. Now, as I mentioned, it's extremely cold. This is why the fishermen wouldn't let us go out. I think it's like between minus 10 and minus 15, which is why I'm wearing this little snood here. But you can just imagine that underneath, I'm smiling the entire time, so you're just gonna have to imagine that. But I'm gonna keep popping it on because it's extremely cold. We've just got to this little river here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get down and I'm just gonna get a few little establishers and I'll explain what I'm doing as we do. But firstly, we've gotta figure out a safe way to get down because obviously when you're shooting in extreme conditions, the thing that's more important than anything else is making sure you do everything safely. So this spot's a lot safer, oh, and deeper than uh, the previous, wow, than the previous spot. Now this is the thing, it's like, when you're filming in extreme environments, you have to expect the unexpected. Sometimes that's falling into huge holes like I'm about to do now. James has fallen over, so we'll give him a second. I'm actually not going to go down any further because, as you can see, it's coming up about three, two, three feet up to my legs. Now, I don't know where the ice starts and the ground stops, and I certainly don't want to be walking on that ice. So what I'll do is I won't go any further, and I'll use my lenses to help me out instead. So at the moment, I've got a 24 mil on. I'm shooting in 6K. This gives me a nice ability to crop. Now, I don't typically like to crop if I don't have to, but it's nice to know I can if I want to. So, I'd love to sit on this snow, but I don't think it's gonna... Oh yeah, no, that's actually worked. Okay, and I've got my ND on because I wanna shoot at 1.8, just to sort of get a little bit of these full ground elements, really nice and soft. So I'll roll up. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just got a nice establisher. So I've shot on 24, I've got a nice little array. I'm probably gonna go for an 85 now. And the reason for that is, is to hone in on a little bit of detail. I really like doing it. I do it in pretty much all of my videos and it's such a stunning location. You don't just want to get one shot of it, you know, you want to tell the story within a few shots. So I'll get another nice one where it's sort of highlighting a particular bit. One of the nice things about this camera is it has really good stabilization, which allows me to shoot handheld, sat on this snow without really worrying about it either. You know, I actually brought my tripod. I thought I was going to tripod this shot, but I really don't need to. And that's, that's just such a benefit. It just allows for so much flexibility. Still though, even when you shoot handheld, it's really about as stable as you are, and I'm not always the best. So I like to do things a few times, just to ensure that you have the exact shot you want. I'm just trying to do a focus pull, so I always do it a few times. There's nothing worse than composing a beautiful shot, getting to the edit, and realizing that you messed up, because you can't go back and reshoot. Well, certainly not when you're in Norway anyway. With the limitations of the snow, I can't really get as close as I want to these, this subject. It's a little bit frustrating, but that's what you have to work around in travel film. And that's why sometimes different bits of equipment can really help you with that. So I'm actually gonna get the drone out in a moment because there's a gorgeous bridge over there. It's actually a really thin bridge. We've been driving across it many times. It's an absolute nightmare. It's really pretty. I can't physically get the shots that I'd really like to get of that bridge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back. I've got a couple of establishers here. You don't wanna to spend too long in any given location and you know, you don't wanna spend too long on any given shot. So I've got sort of three or four, what I would call hero shots here, which are the shots that you really want, the really nice shots. And now we're gonna move on. I'll fly the drone up quick. We'll spend five minutes getting that. And then we're gonna head up to the next location. <sighs> Lovely stuff.
Always good to give your shots context. Sign of Hella, video about Hella, film it. So we're just moving on to our next location, which is a cave with some sort of icicles hanging down, which is a really awesome location we spotted yesterday. You'll probably notice I've rigged my camera up on a gimbal. The reason for that is, is because I want to add some motion to the shot. Motion is something that really makes your video really dynamic. It can take your video to the next level. But for me, it's quite distracting when the motion isn't clean. So no matter how good the stabilization is in this body, it's never gonna be as good as using the proper equipment, which is why I've rigged it up on a gimbal to get a nice sort of slow move through the tunnel. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a little gimbal walk, sort of the reveal outside of the tunnel. So I'll frame up really nicely. And then you can see what you wanna do is you wanna walk as slow as possible and you wanna walk really controlled because <laughs> Yes, the gimbal is an amazing stabilizer, but it's only as amazing as you make it. So make sure every movement counts. And hopefully you can get a clean shot. So I'm just trying to get sort of an interesting angle of, it's quite difficult. I don't know if the shot's actually gonna work. Of a pull down to sort of reveal the, well, it's very hard to not get myself in the shot, that sort of just to show off the icicle. Sometimes you try stuff, you don't know if it's gonna work, but that's filmmaking for you. That's part of the fun is try it. Sometimes the thing you think that is gonna look terrible is your best shot. Sometimes the thing you were really excited about just doesn't work, but that's the exact reason why to try it all anyway. So, we've come back to our accommodation now, and we've done that for a couple of reasons. Reason number one is safety. We aren't from Norway, and we're not used to shooting in these kind of environments, so we need to make sure that we're staying safe, we need to make sure that none of us are getting too cold, so we come back to warm up and just make sure that everybody's doing okay. It's a really, really important thing. There's no point making the most amazing film ever if you're not gonna do it safely. If you're not gonna come back from it, then what's the point of shooting it in the first place? But we've also done it for a second reason, and that's because you really need to contextualize the locations that you're going to, and that means that actually it's no good making a tourism travel video where you don't show off accommodation. When tourists come here, they're gonna to have to have somewhere to stay, so we need to show that off too. Now, we're extremely fortunate that we actually are staying right next to this gorgeous lake. We have a really cute little cabin. I used Tiffany as a model, and I got a couple of shots of her wandering around, you know, dusting her boots off. And it kind of tells a story, you know, you go out for the day, you go to these amazing locations, and then you come home and you dust off and you sit by a warm fire and you have a nice tasty dinner. This is really important and it's easy to forget when you're making these kind of videos that you need to tell a story. There's no point just getting a load of random shots and hoping that they cut together in the edit. You need to be editing while you're shooting and this is a big part of it. So they're the reasons that it's so important to make sure that you're coming back to your accommodation so that everybody's safe and so that you can get the shots that you need. Now I'm gonna go get warm. So we've just come into this town, uh, I think it's called Luen, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But the reason we're here is actually not intentional. We wanted to go to go to a whitewater rafting place. The reason we wanted to go there was to show off sort of activities that tourists can get up to, but unfortunately because of the time of year we've come, uh, it's way too cold and actually the activities were cancelled, so we've had to adapt. Instead, we've opted to come to this town because while we've been here, we've noticed that the towns are incredibly gorgeous and actually offer quite a lot in terms of tourism because they're really nice places to come and they're also, as a result, quite nice places to shoot. So what I'm gonna do is I'll wander around the town and I'll get some shots and as I do, I'll talk you through what I'm doing. So, one of the benefits of coming to this town is the fact that there are lights everywhere. That means that we can shoot at later times. Now, obviously the nature of being in Norway, there are very short daylight hours here. So we basically lost the light a little earlier than we were hoping to shoot, but that's not a problem because there's a few things that actually this camera offers which help me with that. 
For example, it has a dual native ISO. I'll just explain that quickly for anybody that doesn't know what that means. Basically, there's two optimum points of ISO where you're going to get a really nice amount of dynamic range, but more importantly, less noise. Which basically means that obviously you can imagine that offers so much more than some of the previous Panasonic models. It means that I can shoot a lot later, which means that we don't have to call our shoot early. We can keep going and keep shooting. Alongside that, the fact that I'm shooting on this nice series of primes really helps me because prime lenses, apart from the fact that they get really nice sharpness and often provide a really nice look, they're generally much faster than zoom lenses. So while you get a bit less flexibility, yes, I have to move myself around more, although that can be argued that that's really good for composition. It makes you think a little bit harder. But the main benefit is the fact that it can go down to 1.8 and so can all of the lenses that I've been using to shoot on today. It means that even though we're sort of in this dwindling light, even though it's like four o'clock, it's really early, it's not gonna be a problem. So something we've noticed as well, Norway seems to be really big on Christmas lights. There are Christmas lights all around all of the towns and they all seem to have this sort of same color palette, color hue to them, which is much more cohesive than the Christmas lights that I'm used to seeing in the UK. And it's really nice because it kind of gives it a really cohesive look that every town kind of has this very similar cute vibe. So that's something I want to capture. It's something that I wouldn't have expected coming here. And that's why it's cool to include it in the travel video is because it gives it, I guess, a sense of authenticity that we would have never experienced had we not actually been here ourselves. I actually just got a really nice moment there. There was a couple of people walking along this pathway and I got a shot of them. And that's something that I've been really looking for, is trying to find people. Norway has some outstanding landscapes, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. And that's also one of the reasons we decided to come to the town is to shoot some of that. So I'm really happy because you want the video to feel local. And if you want the video to feel local, the best way of doing it is to film some locals. So that's it for today's video, I think. I'm happy with what I've shot. I'm happy that I've got enough content for this travel video. But before I concluded, I just wanted to give you a couple of thoughts about what I have thought using the S5 II in sort of a, a real world scenario that Wex have set me. And I think it's performed really well. I think the 6K feature has probably been my favorite one. It's allowed me a lot of flexibility. I'm already thinking about the edit now and I know that it gives me flexibility to punch in. It gives me flexibility to just like not have noise in my image because even if I don't want to punch in, downscaling that 6K to 4K just looks really crisp. And actually, the, but the real best thing for me is the fact that I can now shoot in low light. And I couldn't really do that on Panasonic cameras before. It was my biggest gripe with Panasonic cameras was that the low light capabilities were, were quite difficult to work with. I was a bit worried when I got here that it maybe wouldn't perform that well, but I've been completely proved wrong. I've had no issues with exposing. All my histograms look really nice. The other thing that I think has impressed me most about the camera is the autofocus. It's the same situation. It was the one thing that I always felt Panasonic just couldn't quite keep up with. And sometimes it basically meant that if I was using a Panasonic camera, I felt like I had to use manual focus the entire time but I don't feel like that anymore, you know? I felt like if I just composed a shot and I told it to focus, it always nailed that focus, which just sort of, it takes a lot of stress out of the situation of shooting because, you know, not only are you trying to get really nice composition, you're trying to get nice camera moves, but you're also trying to nail the focus. So just not having to worry about that actually means that you can just get better shots overall and therefore make a better film with so much more ease. So it's something that I just don't have to worry about anymore and I'm really happy about that. Okay guys, so I know you thought you were rid of me, but you're not quite. I just wanna give you my top tips just before I finish. Now, tip number one is gonna be, be adaptable. I think that's what sets a good filmmaker and a bad filmmaker apart. Today, I thought I was gonna be making a documentary about a fisherman. In the end, I made a travel video. You know, when you're on set, things go wrong. Things go wrong all the time and you've gotta find a workaround for them. You can't always reschedule and you can't deliver nothing to the client. So instead of making a documentary about a fisherman, we adapted, we came up with a new plan and we made a travel video. It's a really good example of how you can just like, when you're faced with difficulties, you can get around them. Yeah. Tip number two is gonna be, think about the story, think about the edit. When you shoot a shot, shoot it with intention. Don't just shoot a shot because it's pretty, as much as that is really nice. Think about how it's gonna work in the storyline of your video, where you're gonna be cutting it in because you can film the most amazing segment of a video, but if it doesn't have an intro, if it doesn't have an outro, if it doesn't relate to anything 
in any way and there's no cohesion, there's no point doing it. So you've really got to make sure that's, again, that's another thing I think that sets a good filmmaker and a bad filmmaker apart is making sure that you're always thinking one step ahead and you're always thinking about the end product, not just what feels good in the moment. And tip number three is gonna be stay safe, be smart, don't be stupid. All right, there's, we've been presented with a lot of opportunities on this trip where we could have done things that were potentially dangerous and we may well have gotten away with them, but you aren't going to every time and it's much more important to stay safe and just think about these things before you do it. Plan stuff out properly and don't just like jump in with a leap of faith. I know you wanna get the best shots possible, but it's so much more important to make sure that everybody walks home safe and sound. But last but not least, we're gonna play the video for you because you know, you've know you seen me make it and you've seen me sort of talk about certain elements, but unless you see it all together, it really doesn't mean a lot. So we'll play the video for you now and I really hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes and I hope you enjoy the video too. I've been George Johnson, thanks for watching.